Hi, this is Janice from ScrappyCutsOnline.com. Today I'm going to show you how to make a mini album using only one 12 by 12 sheet of paper for the pages. So let's get started. The first thing you're going to do is take a 12 by 12 inch piece of paper and score it at 3, 6, and 9 inches and then turn it at a 90 degree angle and score it again at 3, 6, and 9 inches. The easiest way for me to fold this booklet without becoming confused is to write on the back of the piece of paper. On two of the corners, the upper left and the upper right, I would write front on the left and end or back on the right. And then following the squares like a snake down and then up and then down and then up, I would number two squares, one, one, and then two and two horizontal and then three vertical and three again four four and then down five five six six and then seven seven up and then eight on the second to the last square and after you have marked each one of your squares then you're going to crease on the score lines of each row of squares Repeat this until all of the rows are creased. Unfold your piece of paper by one so that three of the folds are still bundled together. After you get all of your squares creased and you have it in three rows, your paper in three rows, then I have found that the easiest way for me to cut this and get my lines pretty much straight so my pages are pretty even is to fold, keep it folded in three and then cut on all three of those rows at one time and so here I'm cutting between the one and the three all the way up to the two two but do not go past that and now five and seven all the way up to six six but do not again pass that line and then turning it around and making the bottom to have the rows again and then the top is a flap so cutting between the three and the five all the way up to the four four and not past the four four line so what you should have once all your cuts are made is either a W or turning it around it's an M and then it also helps to make that last crease on those those three ends. So there's the two on the bottom and then creasing it in the middle for that third one. The book will go together very easily if you remember to always put the numbers together. So the one is going to be adhered to the other one. And I just use my ATG gun. It seems to work just fine. And I try to get all of the edges so that the edges do not have any place for it to get for things to get hung up in it in the pages. Okay, so I've got the one adhered. Now I'm going to fold over the other one so it meets. The front page and the last page are on a single square, and those pages will attached to the binding of the book. And then continue by adhering the threes together, the fours together, and etc, etc. There's a lot of videos out there showing you how to make this book out of one page of scrapbook paper. I hope that I've been able to give you a little bit of help on assembling it and cutting it out that will make the pages even for you. On this page I wanted to show you that you could just tape two sides or three sides of the page so that it could form a pocket and then you could stick a little tag or another picture inside of that little pocket so that would add a little interest to your to your book. So just remember to tape the pages that are alike, the ones to, 
the ones, the threes, the threes, etc., etc., and you're you will have no problem putting this book together. Now you have a little booklet that has 12 pages that you can decorate or use as a little telephone book or script book, make a little gift for someone to put in their purse of pictures of their grandchildren. It really makes a cute little book. This booklet has a chipboard cover and of course it's covered up so it looks really nice and finished. You start out with scoring the piece of paper into two lines and they are a quarter of an inch apart. They're parallel lines. And that's the binding of the book. The two chipboard squares will go on the inside of the book without anything in the binding. You don't need it for this little booklet. So you skip between the two scored lines. To make sure that the front cover and the back cover are even, I push them together and take my pencil and draw a light line on the top and the bottom and that lets me know where to place the cardboard or the chipboard. Let's use my ATG gun to attach the chipboard to the cover of the book. After the chipboard inserts are attached to the cover, it's time to add the ribbon. And the ribbon is going to be adhered to the inside of the book, just like this. I'm trying to find where the middle is and, and measuring the width of the ribbon. So you see I'm drawing a little line. And then I'm going to fold the, the booklet backwards so the inserts are there and take a scissors and snip down the middle of that line that I drew. After I snip that middle I will take the scissors and cut along that line so it is the same width as the ribbon. Sorry that I'm off camera here. And now it's time to add the ribbon. The first thing I'm going to do is take my ATG gun and make a line of adhesive all the way down the middle to from the slit to the other slit. The middle of the ribbon and place it flat on the the book. So it's a it's easy to slip the ribbon through the slit and and um, it will be and have a nice finish. Okay. Now take your scissors and make an, uh, two little slits along the score lines and then on the inside of those slits cut a slant so there's two little V's. That will help the paper lay down flatter on your little booklet. And now if you've ever bound a book cover before you have to cut off the little triangles on each corner of your your paper so that your paper will lay nice and flat and look at, have a good finished look. Or glue stick or whatever adhesive you are using and make a little strip of tape along the paper and then just bend it over. That seems to be the quickest and nicest way of getting the paper to fold over. And then repeat on the other side. Doesn't that look nice? And then you're going to do the same thing on each end, being careful not to get the end of the ribbon into your adhesive. And now it's time to add your booklet to your cover. And again, I'm just using ATG gun. Add tape to each edge. Make sure that you get all the way to the edge so that the paper will not get hung up on anything and rip and then repeat for the back of the book. And there the book portion is already complete and the pages were all made from just one 12 by 12 piece of paper and you get 12 different pages. 
the theme of this booklet is Alice in Wonderland so that's why it has white pages and a blue cover and then black ribbon because Alice wore a black ribbon in her hair I printed up the words that go into this book on Avery stickers and this is once upon a time after burnishing the sticker to the cover of the book you can turn it around to make sure that it doesn't need to be trimmed in my case this one needed to be trimmed attach the title to the book and then after that go ahead and add the little rabbit to resemble the white rabbit in Alice in Wonderland and then on each page, since this book has to do with Alice in Wonderland, I printed up words and characters on Avery stickers. And these were the ones that are the return address stickers. And each one, each page will have something on it. You could wait to add your pictures before you put the stickers on. That way the stickers are kind of overlapping your picture. If not, you want to give it away as a gift and let the, your receiver add their pictures and you can just add them like I did. So we have Alice in Wonderland, White Rabbit, Cheshire Cat, Too Tall, Too Small, um, Toodle Dee, Toodle Dum, the, and, and on and on and on. Oh, the March Hare, the Tea Party, the Night, the Jabberwocky. And so there's 12 different characters that have to do with Alice in Wonderland. Each page of this book is three inches by three inches. So it makes a nice little book that to put in your purse or at Christmas time you can make a little stocking stuffers. That would look great. Or a, a little um, book that you can send through the mail. So um, it has lots of possibilities. I chose to make these the Once Upon a Time theme so I have Peter Pan and I have Alice in Wonderland and Snow White and you can find these files at my website at www.scrappycutsonline.com we will also be having these books at the Scrapbook Expo in San Diego May 4th and May 5th 2012 stop at our booth say hi and do one of our make it tickets. Hope to see you there. Bye.